Compiling source code this time on Hacktip. Welcome to Hacktip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm your host, Shannon Morse, and today we are learning all about compiling programs from source code. So source code is the data that all of our programs run on. It's what developers write and build programs out of. In this day and age, most programs that you are going to run on Windows, Mac, or Linux are just going to be available as an executable or a pre-compiled file that will simply install all of the different parts that you need to run that program. It makes it really, really easy. But sometimes you will need to compile the source code. So maybe it's a beta program that isn't quite ready for prime time. Or maybe you are a developer working on a team and you need to share your source code with other people and make sure it compiles correctly. Or maybe you just want to experiment with the latest and greatest that's available. Either way, it's very important to understand how to compile source code on Linux. And I am assuming that you already know what compiling is, but if not, compiling takes the developer's source code written in whatever language they program in, and it compiles that language into something that the computer understands. And if it doesn't break, it will run a program. So compiling turns the human speak source code into ones and zeros. Programming started with binary data, but it then moved on to assembly, then Fortran, and then later COBOL. Later, other programming languages popped up, including C, C++, and a lot more, each of them with its own positives and developers developing their own preferences. Sometimes there's a lot of drama ensued with those preferences. Sometimes a program does not need to be compiled at all, especially if it was written with an interpretive language like Python, Perl, or PHP. These are just getting executed directly instead of needing to be compiled. But back to compiling. Many different operating systems support the ability to download an IDE, which is an integrated development environment. Basically, this would be a graphical user interface that a developer can write code in, they compile it, and then they can debug any errors. IDEs are one of my favorite things. They make programming way easier, in my opinion, because they light up all sorts of colors for errors. They tell you what line an error is on, and then they run programs right through the interface, which makes everything so simple. But you can do the same thing through the terminal, which is why we're all here, right? And that is what we are going to do today, right after this break. IT people, you know how it is. When all of those alerts and tickets light up your monitor like fireworks on July 4th, you are not being productive, you are just stressed out. No mere mortal can analyze all of those alerts and respond to all of those tickets. But luckily, I got some good news. You can immediately reduce that noise with Moogsoft AI Ops. Moogsoft AI Ops is an algorithmic IT ops platform that reduces your IT alerts and tickets by up to 99%, guaranteed. Moogsoft AI Ops platform integrates with all of your existing IT tools, and their patented technology correlates events into actionable work items called situations, so that you can focus on tackling the stuff that actually matters to your job. Now, in one case study, a company was experiencing tons of alert fatigue, lack of context, thousands of tickets. Mooksaw stepped in. They helped with reactive approaches to incident response tickets by enabling time to value, easing the integration of ITSM tools and existing monitoring, and increasing the quality of event correlation across multiple tools. They saw a 33% reduction in mean time to restore in the business. With Moogsoft AI Ops, you can reduce your IT alerts and tickets by up to 99% right now. Visit Moogsoft.com to get its demo. That's M-O-O-G-S-O-F-T.com. Moogsoft.com. All right, we are now back and we are going to compile some source code. So I already have a compiler installed on Ubuntu by default. It's called the GNUC compiler. Just comes with Ubuntu like that. You don't have to download anything. And I have downloaded a file called Diction that's zipped up in a tar GZ file. That's called a tarball. Now this program, once compiled, will check text files for proper diction. To unpack the tarball file, I just simply type in tar xzf diction-1.11.tar.gz 
and then I hit LS to check for my new diction directory, which it did great, so that's awesome. So now if I change directory over to the diction folder and then list all the files with LS, we will see a bunch of files, all parts of this diction program. Now the important ones here are the readme doc and the install doc, both of which you can see here, both of which will teach you how to install and how to use the program. Now if you cat readme or cat install, you can read all about this program right there in the terminal just like any other docs, but to compile it we just use two different commands, and those commands are configure and make. So while in this diction directory, I'm going to type in dot slash configure to tell configure that the program is in the current directory with that dot slash. Then I hit enter and you should not see any errors. If you do, something's wrong. Try downloading the entire thing again. Then type in make, and then once finished, type ls to see the final result. Now you should have a new file called diction in your folder, so if you ls, you should see diction in there now, or whatever the program is called, in this case it's diction. Now one nice thing to mention about make as well is that it will only compile what changes have been made to the source code. So if no files have been changed, make is not going to compile anything. Now if only one file has changed, make will only update that one, which is super great for like updating patches or whatever you need as a developer. Once compiled though, how do we know that it is actually completed? Well, it's not quite installed yet, it's just compiled, so we need to actually install it by typing in sudo make install, and then try typing man diction to see if we actually get the man page. And do we get the man page? Sweet, it worked, that's awesome. Now this is the last of my hack tips for this series, but I had super fun times learning about how to compile programs. I thought that was so cool, and now I feel like I can do all sorts of things. Uh, but I will be back in the near future, so until then I want to hear your feedback. You can comment below, let me know what you think, and what kind of shows you want to see in the future for Hack Tip. And be sure to check out our sister show, Hack 5, for more great stuff just like this. And I will be there reminding you to trust your Technolust.